My life time, Lord, I give you my life, my life time, oh Lord, I give you my life, since I gave God my life time, he's been taking care of me. And he has never, never let me down. Lord, I give you my life. Your lifetime. Will you give God your life? If you give God your lifetime. He will take care of you and he will never, never let you down. I say give God your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, my God and my King, I thank you for this hour. I give you praise. I worship you. You are wonderful. You are great. You are awesome. You are beautiful. There is no one like you. There is no one like you. Father, I came here again today to say you are wonderful. I came here again because you sent me to come. Lord, Father, I present your word before you. And I'm presenting all your children who are, who are listening to your word right now. Father, Lord, give us an understanding spirit of God. Give us the learner's understanding. Give us an understanding ear. Help us, O oh God, to hear your word and obey it in the name of Jesus. I cover this arena with the blood of Jesus. All the instruments that will be used to bring forth your word, I cover with the blood of Jesus. I cover my life with the blood of Jesus. Lord, I'm praying that today glorify yourself. Glorify yourself in this place. Glorify yourself in your word. Glorify yourself. Father, Lord, I'm praying that in all, as many as will listen to this message, let their life never remain the same again. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, merciful Lord. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. You are welcome back again on the hour of empowerment. My name is Sister Mary Chidison, your regular host on this program. Today we are bringing a new and very interesting topic titled return. Return. When you hear that word, it's a common English word, but want to use it, analyze it very well and bring it to our individual lives. Which place, do you, which area of your life do you need to return and what are you returning to? What is the meaning of return? What does it mean to return? That's all what we are going to do today. Look at who are the people to return? And which aspect of return am I concentrating on? Praise the living God. Now, when we look at that word return, we see that to many people, it could mean different things. Return. We also can use that word return as in returns. We can also use the word return as in in return. In return. Now, when we bring it to returns, we are talking about your profit, your gain, like after a business deal. These are our returns. These are the profit that we made out of this business. Now, when we talk about in return, we're talking about payback time. In return, at the end of the day, what happens in return? They all have relations, but I want to look at the word return. That's going back from where you started, where you came from. That's the word I'm going to look at today, return. That means for you to return, you must have started somewhere. You must have left somewhere to something. Now, also, I want you also to focus your mind to returning to good and not to bad. Because everything that we do in this place, anytime I come to present a message, is all about God. It's all about the word of God. And when we're talking about returning, we want to return to good. We want to return to the original purpose of God for our lives. We want to return to that thing that makes us children of God. 
Praise the Lord. Have you taken a step in life? And now, you are regretting it. If those steps you have taken are something that you can correct, steps that you can retrace back, why don't you start now to return? Don't be afraid to return. Returning is always good, especially when you are returning to good. The payback, the reward is always very, very good. Now, let us look at the word of God before we continue our discussion. I just believe that as you listen attentively today, you will be blessed in the name of Jesus. I'm going to be reading from the book of John, uh, chapter 2, and I'll read from verse 1 to 10. I'll be very, a little bit fast because of the time. Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the fish belly, and he said, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice, for you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the floods surrounded me. All your billows and your waves passed over me. Then I said, I have been cast out of your sight, yet I will look again towards your holy temple. The water surrounded me, even to my soul. The deep closed around me, weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down to the moorings of the mountains. The earth, with its bars, closed behind me forever. Yet, you have brought up my life from the pits, O oh Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. And my prayer went up to you into your temple. Those who regard worthless idols forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay with I will pay what I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. Look at verse 10. So the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. I will continue to read the other verses, but I want you to begin to reflect over the book of Jonah chapter 2. This is a prayer of a man in distress, a man in need, a man that needs to do the right thing urgently. Are you in that situation right now? Do you need to do the right thing urgently? Are you thinking it's late? The situation is hopeless. You cannot change what you started. Some people will tell you that I am deep into this mess. There is no way out. But I brought a good news for you today. There is a way out only if you can believe. There is a way out. If you can trust the Lord Jesus, he will give you that hand of fellowship and he will restore your soul. He will put smiles on your face again. You have not drowned so deep that like so deeper than Jesus cannot reach out to you. It's only if you decide to stay in that situation that you are finding yourself today. If you decide not to make a move, if you decide not to make a change for your soul, then you will sit down there while the devil whispers to your ear and keeps telling you it's all over for you. That habit you started so early in life, you cannot stop it. It's too late. I want to tell you something. Someone like Job entered into the fish belly. And inside there, he was still praying and calling upon the name of the Lord God Almighty. And you can look at verse 10 again. And the Lord commanded the fish. Is there anything created on earth that cannot hear the voice of God and obey? There is nothing. He is the Lord God Almighty. He said, is there anything too hard for him to do? There is nothing difficult for God to do. Have you decided to make up your mind, to retrace your step and return? Jesus is waiting for your return. And I want to tell you something, that there will be joy in heaven over your life. The moment you take that beautiful step to return, return to the master, return to the Lord Jesus, return to your original, the original purpose of God for your life, return to that which makes you whom you are. Do not follow the, the whispering of the devil in your hearts. 
many of us have sunk so low today. Why? Many of us pastors, evangelists, ministers of the gospel of Christ, because of one mistake you made, because of one thing or the other that you did, the devil has held you ransom, held you with a very big tormenting load. Every day you want to take a step and return to the Lord, he will whisper to you, it's too late. Do you read the word of God at all? It's not too late. God is still in the business of restoring your soul. Come to Jesus today. You will not regret it. Let's go further and look at the book of Joel chapter 2. And I'll be reading verse 12 and verse 13. Now therefore says the Lord, turn to me with all your hearts, with fasting, with weeping, with mourning, and rend your hearts, and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and, great, and of great kindness, and he relents from doing harm. What a wonderful God we have. What a kind father. What an awesome God. Repent with your whole heart and come to the Lord today. He will not hurt you. He will welcome you back. Let's see the book of Jeremiah 24. And I'll read verse 7. Then I will give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. For they shall return to me with their whole hearts. What are you waiting for? You mean the return we're talking about is returning with your whole heart. Returning with your whole heart. I'm going to tell you something. Why so many people, they don't, they don't want to return back. It's just a simple explanation. Some people take the excuses of it's too late to come back but it's not that something is keeping them from coming back if you hear the word of god say return with your whole heart return now we have looked at the meaning of return and i told you that we are concentrating today on that particular return whereby you have been to somewhere before and you are returning back and what you are returning to is to good not to evil that means today I'm not seated here to tell you to return to your bad habits. Return to that thing you were doing before you gave your life to Christ. No. Rather, I'm telling you that if you have backslidden from your righteous way, if you have decided to go the other way that is not the way of God, if you have decided to go the way of the world, return back to God. Because every individual created by God came with a wonderful, precious gift from God. God has a purpose for your life. And when you came into the world, you were so clean, so wonderful and beautifully made. But today, so many things has entered and polluted your relationship with God. And it's making it difficult for you to serve God with your whole heart. It's making it difficult for you to live a purposeful life, to do the right thing. But today, I'm here to tell you, to encourage you that there is still room for return. Job could pray that desperate prayer. In the belly of fish. Why not you? When you start praying. That the Lord will restore you back. The moment you return with your whole heart. Luke chapter 15 verse 17. I want to look at this, some of the reasons. For return. When he came to his senses. He said. How many of my father's hired servants. Have food to spare. And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. Remember I said from the beginning that if you are to return, it means you left somewhere good. You left somewhere and went to somewhere. This is the story of the prodigal son. You can find it in the book of Luke 15. You can read the whole chapter. And this, this man or this young man decided to go out 
of the father's house, even though he knew the father was wealthy, has everything he needed, but he decided to go and try the other side of life. And what happened to him? At the end of the day, he lost everything, became empty, started suffering. And the suffering led him to start having everything. Now, I will arise and go back to my father, where I'm coming from. After all, in my father's house, they are abundant full of food. A lot of things to enjoy. My father's servants, they are all riding cars. They have beautiful houses, food to throw away. And I'm here eating food from pig and all that. Let me go back. That means he decided to bury his shame. He decided to bury his pride. He decided to go back to his father to beg for forgiveness. He repented from his heart wholeheartedly. He was ready to take the next step. He was ready to listen to his father. He was ready to humble himself and come back now as a son. Now, I wonder, if, as you're hearing the message, are you actually thinking about yourself? You've taken the wrong step. Oh, now I'm a young man. I have grown up. Why am I still under the control of my parents? Why are people still telling me, should people run my life? Should my pastor be the one telling me what to do? Look at what's happening in sites. Everybody is on the internet. Everybody is doing their things the way they like. Oh, it's good. It's all well and good. Technology development, all these are very good. But if you use it wrongly, it goes all the way to destroy your life. And if you're already on the verge of destroying your own soul, why don't you listen to this message today and return? Return because in my father's house, there are many, many mansions there. Joy and happiness, peace in the Holy Ghost. Some people look at us. Some people see me, they say, ah, this. Some, some people that don't even know me very well, when they look at me, they will say, a wonderful woman, very wealthy, very this. Oh, her life is so good, shining. You know why? All these are happening in Christ Jesus. Without him, the person you are seeing is completely empty. Empty, empty without nothing. Without even no name. Without no name. Yes. What's that that gives us joy? What's that that gives us confidence? Some people will hear me singing, even when I'm walking on the way. I get motivated in my spirit to start singing because something beautiful was happening inside of me. Some people don't have the joy that I have, even though you have all the money on earth. Even though you have all it takes to, to become wealthy. People look at you, they respect you. I tell you, you may not have what I have. Why? Because Christ in me is the explanation of all. I come out, I rejoice. Are you rejoicing today? Are you happy? Even when things are going the wrong way, you look at it, you smile. Because you know, the person that has the solution lives within. He is the Lord Jesus. He is the Almighty. He lives within me. He gives me the courage that I need at all times. He talks with me. He walks with me. He is the Lord and the master over my soul. Why did you leave the place that you will get your strength and decide to go to where you will be destroyed? Because you feel you can control your own life. Let me tell you, you can control your own life to an extent. You don't know it all. Come to Jesus. Return back to the master. Return to Christ. Return to where you have left your first love and come back to Jesus. He will heal your wound. He will take away those pains. He will show you mercy. The prodigal son cried and remembered where he was coming from. He said, no more pride. I'm going home. Yes, some of the reasons. Uh, when you face hardship, you have left the place you were enjoying in Christ Jesus. You went to the other side. Now you are facing so many challenges. You see some people, some people say that you don't go to churches until you have a problem. Yes, that's what people think. When there is a problem, you start calling your pastor. You start calling you the minister. Oh, pray for me, pastor. You become so punctual in the church. You, the first person that comes to church becomes you. you. You are no longer the person that people be calling on the phone. Where are you? Because there's a problem. You run to the church. Problem can push you to return. That is one of the things. Jonah found himself in the fish belly. He started praying a prayer of repentance. And the fish, God commanded the fish to vomit him. Vomit him where? Back to the place he's supposed to go and do his assignment. And he went there to go and do that assignment. Look at the prodigal son. He returned back to his father. 
When you realize you have done something wrong, it's one of the reasons that will make you to return. Did you leave your family as a man? You left your wife and your children and you ran away. You went to another woman and you are living with the woman. You even lied to the woman that you are not married. And the wife and the children, they are suffering somewhere. Return. Confess to that woman. Tell her the truth. Return. Return to, to your wife. Return to your family. Tell the woman you are living with the truth. Are you a woman? You left your husband. And you are running from one place to the other. Deceiving people. Telling them, no, return, my dear. Return. Everybody has telephone today. We use our phone to do all kinds of things. Return. What is it that is causing problem in your home? Can't we fix it? In Christ Jesus, we will fix it. Why don't you return? Return. Man and woman, return. Children, return to your parents. Stop wandering about in the street. Look, after the day's work, after the day's activities, we are happy to go home. Do you know why? We sit together, we talk to each other. We are family. How did it go today? How did it go today? How was work? We talk to ourselves. We begin to share each other's experience. Is it not lovely? That's what God wants in the home, in the family. Why are you wandering about in, the, in town when you are supposed to go home? Sit down with your children. Talk to them a little bit. Chat with them. Laugh with them. Play with them. Make them feel at home. Give them that encouragement that they need so that tomorrow when they face a challenge, they will be able to handle it. Why are you wandering about? Are you a wanderer? Go home. Reunite with your family. Learn to live at peace in your home. Start that thing you feel you know so much in town. Start it in your house. Let the children feel at home with you. Your son is running away, going outside to look for advice when you as a mother is there. Why? Because you are in town. You are on the internet. You are busy, very busy, madam. You don't want to do anything in your house. You are very busy. Return. Before it gets too late, when you face hardship, then it becomes too heavy for you. The shame alone will not let you to come back easily. Come back now. Are you prepared to take the next step? That's why the Lord is telling us, if you return with your whole heart, wholeheartedly, you will be restored. Your home will be restored. What are you waiting for? Oh, people also return because the assignment is done. You went to somewhere to do work. You went to somewhere to do some things. Your assignment is done. Return. Return. Don't stay there and say, ah, let me stay here a little bit. I'm enjoying myself here. Return. Return to your loved ones if you need to. Return back to where you are coming from if you need to. I mean, returning means something you can handle at that time. It means you are returning to good, not to bad. Remember, so that you don't misquote what I'm saying about return. I didn't say return to bad. Return to good so that you can also affect lives. Make changes. Make something happen in your family. Praise the Lord. Now, what are the hindrances? I've already touched them. What are the things that can hinder you from returning? Pride. Look at me. As the general overseer of this ministry, how can I come out here and say, this is what I've been doing? That I've been deceiving you people, telling you the Lord told me when the Lord didn't say so. You are preparing your soul for hell if you cannot tell your congregation the truth. Many people have made it their habit today. When you come to church, if they don't prophesy to you, it means that church, there's no power. And then you now decide to force yourself to begin to say, Thus says the Lord when the Lord has not spoken. Return to God. Salvation is waiting for you. The Lord Jesus is calling you to come back. Leave those camouflage. See, you have been called to preach the gospel. Do you know that you are not the soul converter? You cannot convert any soul. You are only a preacher. The same way, that church you want to be filled up with people so that you can get more money from them. It's not your church. It belongs to the Lord Jesus. It's not where you make your money. It's not your money-making ground. If actually you counted the cost before you joined the ministry, you would have known that somebody who is serving the Lord must serve him sacrificially. Return to Jesus today. He's waiting for you. Jesus is calling you to return. Don't be ashamed. Start telling your congregation the truth. Stop deceiving people. Say the truth from your hearts. Return wholeheartedly. 
and you will be restored back. Also want to look at people that do not want to return because they are not willing to change. They are not willing to change. You don't want to make a change. If I return back to Jesus, so I will leave this my girlfriend now. And I love her. I love this girlfriend. So you don't want to tell her the truth that you were married somewhere. You have children. You don't want to return. You don't want to tell your girlfriend the truth that in the place where you came from, that you were a worker in the church, that you have been serving the Lord. They call you elder. Anytime you return home, you tell the girlfriend lies and return and go back to your wife and deceive them a lot and come back to her. Repent today and return to the Lord Jesus. If you are not willing to change, if you are not willing to leave all those bad characters, the things you have been doing, smoking and drinking and destroying your own soul, deceiving people, bringing all kinds of shame and disgrace to your family, if you don't want to make a change, then it will be difficult for you to return. Because returning means return with your whole heart and you will be restored back. So many people are afraid of rejection. I will round up here because of our time. So many are afraid to be rejected if I return back to my family. I don't know if my wife will accept me back again. I don't know if my husband will accept me back. Why don't you take a step of faith? Go and confess your sin first and ask the Lord for mercy. He will guide every step that you take. You child that is outside now, you run away from your home because you felt you have grown up. Come back home. Your parents are waiting for you. Just like the father of the prodigal son was waiting with open hands. Your dad and your mom are waiting with open hands. Come home. Return. Return. Most especially, return to the Lord Jesus. Return to your original love. I want to round up here because of our time. I want to encourage you that when you return to the Lord Jesus, you will not regret it. There is peace. There is joy. There is every good thing that you need in Christ Jesus. Return to him today and your life, your family, your activities, everything will change for good. Until I come your way again, I remain your beloved sister, Merit Chidison. Remain blessed in his presence. Amen. Bye. Joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy.